We left off the last video with completion of the router table. Now let's make the fence. We'll be using some T-bar that matches the router table, an aluminum extrusion, and two brackets that form the backstop. HDPE for the face plates, a multi-purpose rail, 3D printed dust collection, and two handles that lock the fence in place. The idea with this was to make a multi-function fence that would work just as well with the router table as it does the table saw. I designed the backstop so that any angle of the saw blade or dado set would not cut into the structure of the fence, only the expendable faceplate. The top-mounted T-Track allows me to use fingerboards and other attachments. The standard faceplates can also be swapped out for depth stops or specialty jigs. This particular build was on the upper end of my shop's capabilities. I'm only set up here for light metal work and this particular extrusion provided some challenges. Drilling the first few holes went smoothly. No complaints on the bandsaw. Cutting the rest of this section with the multi-tool was easy enough. This pocket will form the backstop behind the router. This is where things didn't go so well. I first drilled the pilot hole. Then I tried to bore it out to one inch. Almost immediately the hole gets a bit rough and the vibration from it knocks the chuck and spindle loose from the drill press. There is some slop in the mechanism, and that movement seems to translate into chatter on the part when I'm drilling thick or irregular pieces of metal. Once that starts, it's all downhill from there. I finished this hole by hand, but not without a few more issues. If I were to do this again, I would just cut a square notch out of the backstop at this location and call it a day. HDPE is a non-stick, easy-to-machine plastic that is very resilient. It's frequently used in cutting boards. I used it for the face plates on the backstop. It will allow me to push boards along the fence with minimal resistance. Next, we'll focus on construction of the multipurpose T track. Moving now to the fence rails, I need to prep them for several fasteners. This needs to accept two quarter 20 bolts and one rivet nut. One of the holes in the aluminum angle was bored out to accept a rivet nut. This will form the base of the locking mechanism. The rivet nuts were ground down on either side. We'll get to why that happened in just a few moments. With the two lengths of quarter 20 threaded rod, all the parts were ready to assemble. The standard 8020 drop in T nut was used for these, but I think I would go with a different style that always stays at the correct orientation. These don't seem to reliably lock in place some of the times. There is some slop between the T-bar and T-tracks. I added a few thin washers to build up the surface of the T-bar so that the fence that rests on top of it would never make contact with the table. A few quarter 20 bolts attached both the gussets and the bottom of the fence.
Sometimes these nuts don't roll into correct alignment with the extrusion. That's the only reason why I would try a different solution than these. The locking handles act as large set screws. They do slightly mar the underlying surface when set, but not in a significant way. Most importantly, the lock has a strong hold. Whenever I have something that just ain't sliding right, I reach for a can of Johnson's Based Wax. I slather some on where required, and it's always smooth sailing from there on out. Next, I made a dust board out of a piece of wood and an off-the-shelf fitting. Overall, it worked relatively well, but it wasn't as efficient as it could be. The bulk of it in this part of the fence was also unwelcomed. So I designed one from scratch to fix all these issues. The 3D printed port has a much better scoop that fills up the backstop. In addition, the handhold on the back of the fence is now flat and accessible. The new port is able to capture dust at 4 to 5 inches away from the opening under ideal conditions. Time to break it in. The first cuts came out square. Next I put together some additional tools. First up was a locking stop that used some half-inch plywood and an aluminum angle bracket. The forward stroke is the safe way to push the fence. Unfortunately, the dust collection is way better in the other direction. My second tool was a box jig, which tore out the plywood not one, but three times. If you have a remedy for this, let me know in the comments. The other 3D printed fence component was the locking pin for the box jig. It has a small dust collection port built into it. It worked well after a few adjustments. Tolerances are within three or four thousandths of an inch. And when the job is done, I can fold up my tools and put them away. Remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.